Morning, the Ramam Noel Shafer, Perik Beis, the second Perik chapter, Hadoch Alver, Hadoch Akur, Hayom Mishmer, Kol Shafer. Everyone has to hear the voice of the Shafer. And we'll go to the Purush Kahanim, whether you're a Koyan, a Levi, a Liam, a Levi, a Israelim, a regular Jew, Gerim, converts, Avodim, Mishukhurim, and the freed slaves who also have an obligation of. A, a full fledged Jew. This was shown in 29 according to the Magad Mishnah. The Chiddush, the, the uh, novelty, the Gahan or Liam are obligated. The Gemara explains, because the Mishnah says so, because they, we learn the fact that you blow on Rosh Hashanah from the, you blow on the Jubilee year. And the Jubilee years, uh, the law doesn't apply to their land. So, the uh, Kahan and Levim, their assets are sold not only till the Jubilee year, but forever. The Goyalim Loilam. And you can go along, you can redeem Goyalim Loilam, they can redeem it forever. Bain the Pnei Yoivim, both before the Jubilee year, Bain Arkov, or after it. I easy to say that I might think, since they, they, they are not included in the Jubilee year, therefore they are also not obligated or they're not included in the obligation of Rosh Hashanah, as we'll see, because one is learned from the other. So therefore, here he tells us that Kahan and Levim are obligated. Why are they obligated? The Rabbi Menachem says, because the other aspects of Yoivu, of the Jubilee year, sending away slaves and also uh, foregoing debts is part of the Jubilee year. Therefore, they're obligated also in hearing the Shreifim. Avonoshim avodim ketanim turim, but noshim, women, Slaves who have the same, whether male or female, who have the same uh, obligations as a woman, Oktanim or minors, Apturim are not obligated because the mitzvah of Shefa is a, is a positive commandment which is time uh, related and therefore uh, they are not obligated from those type of mitzvahs. It's a Gemara in Kedushim 29a. If women want to hear it and uh, blow it and hear it, the Agos Maimon is, in the Sitzes, chapter 3, right, writes that you don't stop them. Yeah, like any positive commandment, which is time delineated, that they want to keep. We'll see if they, whether they may make a brook or not. Slaves are not obligated because they are like women, as we learned before, as far as the obligation of mitzvahs. Hagiga Daftalot Amalalot. Law, it says, "Hanema beavid v'lo hanema biyisho." Because we find that a slave is is equated to the eved through the gzera shava of law law, which is mentioned by each of them. The, the minors are uh, not obligated because any minors does not have to keep any mitzvahs, but a, a minor has come to the age of being able to be educated. It says in Erechen, based on the base, everyone is obligated to hear Kodesh Shreifa. Amila HaKuyum means everyone comes to add the minor who is uh, capable of edu- being educated because uh, in the obligation of Shreifa, they are obligated in the but in the they are not obligated. But here, we're talking about an, a, a, a minor. They didn't come yet to the age of education. Even the Rabbonah did not obligate him. We'll see in Aloha Zion, the mitzvahs of Shreifa for cotton that did become of age to be educated. Now, we continue what the Gemara says over there. Somebody who's half a freed slave, half a slave and half a freed person, meaning he belonged to two partners, so half is owned by one, half is owned by the other, and one of them freed him. So the obligation on the freed side is to hear it, and the other half has no obligation. Or tumtum. Somebody, we, we're not sure what he is because there's this skin that's covering his, his private parts, his or her private parts. We don't know if it's a male or female. He's also obligated to Shafer because maybe it's a male. Androgynous is an androgene. They have both private parts. Abena Menach writes the name of Rashin that androgynous is actually 
uh, the numerical equivalent of zo male and female, even though it comes from a Latin word. Call Elohayom, they are all obligated because maybe they are males. The Rishonim disagree whether women can make a brochant ki yashoifah. According to the Rajbo, she brought down the Magad Mishnah in Halacha Beis. She can blow. She's not fearful of desecrating Yom Tov. And she can blow a blessing, and we're not afraid of a blessing for not. And that's the Tor's uh, feeling as well. But from the Rambam, it would seem that women do not make a brocha on hearing shoifu, because by uh, tumtum we do not know what private parts are, and an androgen has both private parts. He writes they do not make a brocha by sukkah, since they are only obligated because we're not sure. Certainly women that definitely are not obligated, they don't make a brocha. Helicitis he writes as well in chapter 3, Aloha Tess, that if women and slaves want to, they can put on tzitzis. They don't make a brocha. And he adds, in all the mitzvahs, positive mitzvahs that women are not liable, they can do them, but they can't make a brocha. Now, was my minutes, he adds, even Rashi would say they're forbidden to make a brocha, but our minute time writes that they can make a brocha on every mitzvah that's saying, that has, which is time related. Whether we, uh, by an animal, when one brings an animal, uh, it's different than a man, and that's a question whether she has to put her hands on the head of the animal and press with all the strength. It says in Hagiga, women are, uh, are not liable. It says, David of Bnei Yisrael, tell the Bnei Yisrael, the children, the sons of Israel, that they should do smicha, lean on the animal, but not the daughters of Israel. But Abiezi says that if she want, they want to, they can lean on the animal, even though it seems like they're using kochim. But they don't do it with all their strength like men, only they just put their hands on, because uh, we permit them to do this so that they feel part of the action, so to speak. It was permitted for them, but they're not obligated. Rabbi Tam says the Allah is like Rabbi Yossi, to permit women to lean because of two reasons. One, in Gitan, Rabbi Yossi ben Yehuda says Rabbi Yossi, when we, he makes a statement, he knows the, the valid uh, reason behind it, and therefore we rely on Rabbi Yossi. And we also find in Arab in 96a, six women. Women that kept misses that were time related and they didn't stop them. Who were they? Michal Basho, she put on spoon. The wife of Yoyna Novi was used to go up to bring to pilgrimage. Even though Torah says it's only an obligation of men and not of women. I'm sorry, it says two women, not six. I'm sorry, it's two women. Even though that blowing a shofar seems like chil yontiv, but since blowing a shofar is considered a wisdom and not a, a an activity, Matera would be permitted to uh, use even musical instruments like Chomim forbade it because maybe they'll come to rectify it. They permitted women to blow for themselves because of the uh, self satisfaction that they have. Just when we find. He permitted them to lean, even though it looks somewhat forbidden. Furthermore, because you're using an animal, it's, that's hegdish. Furthermore, the Rishonim disagree by a person who heard tkiris, if he can blow for women. The Reim and the Rekeach write that he cannot blow for them, since it's only done for the purpose of making him happy. He cannot they cannot then desecrate Yontif for them. And even though they permitted her to blow for herself, they did not permit others to blow. And if he wants to blow for her, Ma Ottenberg writes, if first he should blow for himself and fulfill his obligations. But after, 
in other words, he should blow while he's fulfilling his own obligations. But after he fulfilled his obligations, he cannot blow it for her. But the Torah writes in the name of the Avi Ezri and the Rosh that even somebody who already fulfilled their obligations can fulfill uh, blow for women, even to fulfill their obligations and to carry the shreif for Anyantiv through a public thoroughfare. And that's also the opinion of the Rav Yo. La Locha, concludes that uh, in Simon 589, that you can rely on the Rosh and the Rav Yo to rely on them to blow for women. Even if you fulfilled your obligation, because the logic is there. But still, you shouldn't make a brocha, because there's a disagreement with this regard, and when we have a questionable brocha, one should not blow. The Maril writes that you should not blow for women before you blow for the tzibu. And the woman should make a brocha first for herself before she hears the blowing. And if she cannot, uh, the one who blows can may make the bracha for her. And Dr. Moshe writes that it's better that the one who blows should not make the blessing, only the woman, if she so desires. It says in the Gemara, Rosh Hashanah 29a, all of the brachas, all of them, even they fulfill their obligation, they can fulfill others except for birchas halechem vayayim. And so it is in all birchas hanen. Since he doesn't eat by himself, he cannot, and he's not obligated. Therefore, we cannot make a blessing when it comes to something that you benefit from, like cake, for, for others. If you didn't, if you made a brocha, uh, so too, in these blessings that women themselves, it's better they shouldn't bless, you shouldn't make the brocha for them. But we do not uh, correct somebody does so. Certainly, they, uh, but others certainly should not uh, do it on their behalf. Aloha. It's a disagreement between the, Sh- the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah, between the Edot HaMizrach and the Ashkenazim. The Merhaba says women can blow, even though they're not obligated to. There's no desecration of Yom Tov because um, uh, uh, the mitzvah is very great and uh, they're doing it as even though they're not commanded. It means that even though he's not commanded, he has some sort of a reward. That's what Mr. Buria infers from the language of the Mechaba. A person, a man can blow for them, even after he already fulfilled his obligation, because they have this portion, this bit of mitzvah, and therefore they themselves can blow, somebody else can blow for them as well. And again, is the Mishnah Bura. But they don't make a bracha, and others should, make, others should not make a bracha for them, because how can they say, He who commanded us with his commandments and, and instructed us. It's something that they're not obligated. That's the Mishnah Bura. But the Ramah writes, the meaning is that women uh, make a bracha on the mitzvah, Seish Azman Yoroma, even on Shreifa, the women can make a bracha when they want to read the Shreifa, uh, one blows for them, but the one who blows should not bless, make the blessings if he already fulfilled his obligations, and he's only blowing for them. And if he, he's also for, um, fulfilling the obligations of a man who is obligated, even when he blows, he already has blown, he fulfills his obligation as we clarify it and we find it in 580. A85B.